Welcome to the Immortality Channel. I'm Patriarch John Paul, and this is my teaching ministry. I'm going to do some changing around in the uh, structure of the videos. I've already had 14 or 13 videos on, on YouTube already, but I'm going to make it more interesting, more fun, more educational. So, and more blessing. So here's what I got. I just opened up with my welcome. And welcome. And now we move into the blessing. Uh, it's my blessing that your life is full of happiness and prosperity. And then uh, I'd like to tell a joke. Some videos may have some jokes, some may not. This one I like. Uh, I remember a, a friend, a rabbi friend of mine, tell me this joke. He said, uh, this woman went into the butcher store to get a kosher chicken. And over at the poultry section, she picks up the chicken and she lifts up each of the wing and sniffs underneath it to see if it's fresh. Then she checks the bottom end, the butt end, to make sure there's a lot of fat for some good hearty soup. And then she squeezes the breast to make sure there's lots of white meat because her husband likes white meat. So she kicks the chicken over and goes to the butcher. Mr. Butcher, is this a good chicken? And the butcher looks at her and says, Lady, you should pass such a test. Ah, <laughs> uh, I laughed when the rabbi told me that. That was funny. But uh, let us real quickly now uh, pray for peace. Okay? Lord, protect our children and give peace to the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, the next step in the program is to share with you some stories about what I experienced in my ministry. I live in Brook Park, which is the suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, and we drove, my best friend and I drove all the way to the next state over, Indiana, and 20 miles south of Indianapolis is a small town called Alexandra, and there I was ordained as a priest. And then the next day we came back. It wasn't until this was in January, winter time. It wasn't until April when my local printer, who I go for having my business cards printed up and brochures and literatures, flyers, um, his daughter just had uh, a baby, a boy, and uh, it wasn't baptized yet. He was Catholic, his wife was Protestant, and uh, daughter and husband did not belong to any church. So they asked if uh, I would do it. I said, sure. So we made a date and, uh, and a time and a day. They came over with the godparents and everything. And I did my very first baptism. I had my uh, cassock on, my white surplus, and my priest stole. And I not only baptized the baby, I also chrismated it. Um, that's... Uh, Chrismation is something that the Orthodox does right after baptism. It can be done by a priest or a bishop. And uh, the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church, they do it at the time of uh, 13 years old, I believe, age of accountability, when they know what's right and wrong, good and evil. And the Holy Spirit, and the, um, in confirmation, the bishop gives uh, the child a Holy Bishop, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. Puts the knights the forehead with holy oil, puts his hands on his the child head, I give you the Holy Spirit. That's confirmation. That's in accordance to the teachings of Jesus Christ in chapter three of Gospel of John, verse five, when Jesus says, Verily, verily, I tell you, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you be born of the water and of the spirit. Well, being born of the water is baptism, being born of the spirit is when the priest or the bishop gives you the bush, uh, the priest. So I got finished with him. And I was thinking that um, I remember watching a movie called uh, Doc Hollywood with Michael Fox. 
And uh, in the movie, the old doctor uh, calls him into his office, opens up this cabinet doors, and there is 800 pictures of all the babies that he delivered over the years uh, or decades of serving that community. And I thought, no, that's a, you know, that would be a great idea for uh, you know showing your accomplishment. So I thought I would do the same thing. Every baby I baptized, I would have a picture of that baby, me holding it. So I asked if I could hold the child and have a picture taken for my scrapbook. So I held the baby, and next thing you know, boom, it was done. He waited on me. The, the little boy peed on me. And I thought that was so funny. The parents were so apologetic, and uh, they helped clean up the floor and everything. And after they left, I went ahead and washed out the vestments. But I was laughing. I said, don't, don't, don't apologize. I baptized him. He just baptized me. We're all even. So that was a great, uh, great moment in my life, which I enjoy sharing. And uh, I remember it very well and uh, made me very happy. It's times like this that makes a priest very happy. Now we're going to go into uh, our lesson for the day. I'm going to talk a little bit about me. I've got a lot of videos on the internet, but a lot of people don't know who is the Patriarch John Paul. So, I want to talk to you about my be uh, beginning of my ministry, uh, my calling. Uh, I was raised, born and raised Roman Catholic, so I had lots of years, 18 years of Roman Catholic teaching. And then uh, Senate, Senate, Second Vatican Council happened. I wasn't too happy with the changes that they made, so... I started wandering around. First of all, I didn't go any church to any churches at all for five years. Then I got a job at uh, this transportation company where uh, they have lots of bay doors filled with uh, semi tra uh, trailers where they would load up the trailers and then take the semi trucks out for delivery. Well, this one man who was the uh, uh, repairs the uh, diesel engines of the tractors. Uh, he gave me a Bible lesson. It was the very first Bible lesson I ever had in my entire life. And uh, in the Roman Catholic Church, it was a catechism book. But this is an actual lesson. So, during my lunch hour, I crawled underneath the trailer. And as they were loading the trailer, there was no tractor there. I just sat there and read. I read the entire lesson, and I asked the man if he had any more, because it moved me. It inspired me. It made me thirsty for more of the Lord's Word because I actually learned something. It was great. So from that on, I started uh, taking Bible study courses. Any kind of courses I could take. doesn't matter what church. I just want to take Bible study lessons. I would go. At that time, in Cleveland, Ohio, there was only three channels. Channel 3, 5, and 8. And on Sundays, from 8 in the morning till noon, all they had was religious shows, you know, sermons, uh, preachers, evangelists, so forth. And every religious show I watched for a half hour, they would some of them would offer a Bible study course. Signed up for it right away. So I ended up having several years of uh, training in Reformed Protestantism, Reformed theology. Now you gotta understand, Catholic men who go to Catholic schools become Catholic theologians. Protestant men who go to Protestant universities become Protestant theologians. But what makes me unique is I know what's on both sides of the fence because I've studied Catholic, Catholicism, Protestants, Reform, Systematic Reform, and I also studied in seminary Orthodox faith. So under the um, Protestant Reform faith, uh, I studied it. Here's the, I got a list right here. I'm going to read this for you. My first course was uh, called The Light of the World. It was 25 lessons. And I uh, completed the course in 1979, February. The next course was Daniel and Revelation. That was 34 lessons. And then I took the New Life uh, Bible course. And that had 34 lessons. From there I moved on to 
taking an accredited school uh, at Washington DC called Home Study Institute where I ter first learned uh, biblical survey of the Old Testament and of the New Testament and then a second course I took on how to become a Bible teacher then uh, in 79 I went to during the summer I went to a spiritual retreat a Protestant and I went there and uh, uh, took two courses was a college professor teaching one course called Good News in All 66 Books it was a classroom uh, study, eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. And then at the end, I got a certificate uh, showing my, uh, you know, accomplishment. And then the other one, of course, was from the Religious Education Foundation from Phoenix, Arizona. This was a good one because it taught me how to use references to do research, like concordances, dictionaries, you know, uh, margins in the Bible and so forth. It was a, a really a good a course I enjoyed it. That also was Monday through Friday, eight hours a day. Got my certificate for that. That was from uh, Columbia University, the college. The first one, the good news is all 66. They came from the certificate came from the college of the um, Columbia Union College. And then the second certificate was uh, the Religious Education Foundation. Then I did some more independent studies. I took uh, the 20th century Bible course which had 32 lessons. Uh, Faith for Today Bible Course, 12 lessons. The Quiet Hour Bible Course, 24 lessons. And Christ Speaks to Modern Man, uh, 26 lessons. And then uh, the Bible Says Course, 12 lessons. So these are all the Reformed Biblical uh, education I got from the Reformed Catholics, from the Protestants. And these from all different churches. Uh, these courses were from the Seventh Day Adventist, which was the first one I started, with the Presbyterian, Methodist, Assembly of God, uh, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, and um, Episcopal, uh, Pentecostal. I studied with all of them. I just wanted to learn. So I know where each church is coming from, what kind of truth that they're spreading. Then uh, I got an interest in metaphysics. And uh, I have to say now, it's not New Age metaphysics. Uh, I don't believe in that. I believe in uh, the type of metaphysics that's being taught uh, in colleges all over the, uh, the United States uh, in the uh, Department of Philosophy. Metaphysics is part of philosophy. And I studied metaphysics, got a bachelor's degree there. Then I attended the Lafayette University, got my Doctor of Science degree in the 89 I attended St. Anthony's Seminary which was an Orthodox college uh, and that I graduated also in uh, 1989 uh, during my seminary years what I did was I ha held for a whole year round table discussion Christian debates arguments discussion on various subjects and uh, every uh, the second Tuesday of every month I would invite a pastor from one of the churches. Uh, like on, in January, I had uh, myself, along with a Roman Catholic priest, a Methodist mes minister, and a Presbyterian minister. And then February, I had myself again with the Jehovah Witness Mormon uh, uh, minister and a, uh, a Pentecostal, and so forth. Uh, in July, we didn't hold any meeting at all. Uh, we, it was like a summer vacation. And then in December we didn't have any meeting, but all 20 of the uh, uh, of the uh, ministers and pastors came together at my house for a Christmas uh, uh, party, and uh, we all departed in uh, as good brothers in Christ. And the good thing is that year was one of the most beneficial education I ever got uh, in those roundtable discussions, and uh, that was my third year in seminary when I did that. I also um, took a, a course from the Institute of Jewish Christian Studies and graduated uh, in uh, 1991. And that was one course for each month. It was 12 courses. And then uh, I attended Agape of, uh, of uh, Jesus Seminary. There I got an honorary doctorate degree, 
But then I also took courses to get my master's degree when I earned it with credit. And uh, that was uh, in 91 and then also 2000. Then I became ordained as a priest in uh, 91, made a bishop in 91 in July, and uh, elevated to Archbishop in 2011. Now you see, my educational background comes from three channels. Roman Catholic, Reformed Protestant, and Eastern Orthodox. So I have education on both sides of the fence. I know where um, a, a Baptist or a, a Methodist is coming from when we're talking about a certain subject. Uh, I was elected in 2019 as the Patriarch of the Religious Order called Servants of Christ Jesus of the Catholic Faith. Now we are a Apostolic Catholic Church. What does that mean? That means that we follow the traditions of what was laid down by the Apostles of the first century. Let me give you a real quick short history of church history. When Christ ascended into heaven and the Apostles started spreading the good news of the Messiah, we were first a Jewish church with Jewish preachers Jewish members. It wasn't when you read the story in Acts that the Roman soldiers in, in Antioch first coined the word Christians, which means followers of Christ, and we became the Christian church. Then in 110 AD, uh, Saint, uh, uh, Saint Ignatius of Antioch was a bishop. He was arrested and tried by the Roman uh, soldiers and then he was taken overland to Rome to be fed to the lions. I can't even begin to what kind of an agony death that is to, to kneel there and pray and a lion just jumps right at you and rips your throat out. I just can't imagine me going through that but he did. But on his way from Antioch through Turkey then Greece in Rome, on his way, he wrote seven letters. One of the letters was to the uh, town uh, or people of Smyrna, and in chapter eight, he says, "Wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church," and that's when we became Catholic. Now you got to understand, in one ten A.D. There was no such thing as a Roman Catholic Church. It didn't exist. No Eastern Orthodox Church, and most definitely no Protestant churches existed then. There was only one church united called Catholic then. It wasn't until the Great Schism of 1054 where the Western churches, which were of the Latin, and the Greek churches of the East, they split, forming two bodies. Then, uh, we had the Eastern Orthodox, and then we had the Roman Catholics. But until then, uh, it was the Catholic Church, and that's where my order, the Service of Christ Jesus, is a part of, is that Catholic Church of the 110 AD. That's why we call ourselves Apostolic uh, Catholic Church. Now, I wandered around for a good 10 years, studied with all kinds of churches. And then I went to a seminary and became a, uh, an ordained priest. Why? Because I started to read the writings of the early church fathers, like uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch. He wrote those seven letters. You should read those seven letters because they're on the internet. The entire letter, they're on the internet. Why should I read uh, St. Ignatius' letters? Why should I read the writings of Polycarp. Why? Because these two men actually studied under the Apostle John, the one that Jesus called Beloved, who wrote the Gospel of John. They studied under him. Now, in my kind of thinking, I would like to read their writings 
more than I would want to read Billy Graham's writings or any other modern day uh, author's writing. Why? Because they actually lived and studied under the apostles. You can't get any closer to Christ than that. Authors today can only speculate. But there, they spoke what was being caught, taught as oral tradition or sacred tradition. Uh, the Eastern Orthodox call it uh, holy tradition. Roman Catholics call it apostolic tradition. But it's the same thing. The thing is, they study there. And then I studied, uh, read the, uh, the Didache, which is supposed to be have written by the apostles themselves. And then uh, 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 Justin the Martyr, his writings, first and second Clemens. These are all first and the beginning of second century authors. The closest you can get to the apostles in Jesus. And after reading them and seeing what they were practicing and what they believed, and then seeing what the Catholic and Orthodox Church practiced to believe, it's still the same thing after 2,000 years. They still do the same. That's why I returned to the Catholic Church. Um, when I was consecrated, I received uh, apostolic secession. And that apostolic secession means that I am the 256th bishop from St. Peter in Rome. My apostolic secession goes to the old Catholic Church of Europe then to the Vatican and Rome to St. Peter. One of the bishops that was consecrated before me in my lineage was concentrated twice. So I also have his uh, second lineage too, which is the Orthodox Church in Antioch, which was also founded by St. Peter. So I am the 135th Bishop of St. Peter in or from Orthodox. Uh, Antioch, I'm sorry. Now, Epistolic Secession is very important because it means that I have the flow of authority of the Holy Spirit working through me. That's why it's so important. Uh, when the reform uh, churches started with Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Knox, and several others, they were Roman Catholic priests, but they were not bishops. And only bishops have the apostolic succession. So that means they couldn't follow all the traditions of the Catholic Church that they left. And to my opinion, there was trouble in the church. It was God's church. God will handle it. But no, these men thought to take it upon themselves out of pride to uh, leave the church, or I should say abandon the Holy Church to start up their own churches. See, the Orthodox Church and the uh, uh, Roman Catholic Church and the Servants of Christ Jesus, we were founded by Jesus Christ himself. The Lutheran Church was founded by Martin Luther, not Jesus Christ. Um, the Anglican Church was founded by Henry VIII, not Jesus Christ. The Methodist by John Wesley, not Jesus Christ. See, you follow me where I'm coming from? We practice the tradition of the apostles, the true church. Now, I have several books that I've had printed. Um, I'm going to give the addresses where you can buy them right below the, the description. And you can click on them. The, uh, the second book uh, I uh, published was called the Catholic Talmud. Now the Catholic Talmud, the word Catholic here means universal. Does not mean Roman Catholic. You people have to stop thinking uh, about every time you hear the word Catholic you're talking about Roman Catholic. It's not like that. It's Catholic means universal and the second word is Talmud. Talmud is a Jewish word which means instructions. So this book is on the universal instructions on the Christian faith and it's called the Nine Orders of Divinity and it's biblically based every single thing is biblically based and when you read that book you'll get a very clear understanding of the Christian faith I'm hoping uh, uh, soon that I could come out with a volume two to that book because that's volume one 
Uh, I have a number of uh, inspirational websites that uh, you could go and read the writings and uh, learn more. Uh, I teach as a professor at St. Paul Bible Institute and Seminary. It's an online campus. It's very, very low uh, cost or tuition. Or tuition. tuition. Uh, you can earn a bachelor's degree for $220. And then for another 375 hours after that, you can get your master's and doctorate degree. And believe me, you're going to study because you'll end up having taken 120 courses by the time you get to your doctorate degree. And then you still have to write a thesis. Now on, my, on the website of St. Paul Bible Institute, you'll see what a page called Distinguished Graduates. And uh, I've had graduates who were ambassadors of the United Nations. I've had medical doctors study with me and graduate. I've had professor, there's a college professor in uh, Kansas uh, with Cloud University. He has a PhD in pharmacy to become a pharmacist and he teaches pharmacy. And he studied with me for his bachelor's degree in theology. Uh, Let's see what else has, uh, I want to cover here with you. We covered Apostolic Secession. Um, <clears throat> thanks to uh, Pope John Paul II. In his encyclical in the year 2000 called Dominus Jesus. He writes this. The Church, which while not existing in perfect communion with the Roman Church, remains united with her by means of the closest bonds, that is, apostolic succession. So, the service of Christ Jesus is a child church. The Roman Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox, I like to consider them as the mother church. So, we're going to close right here, and uh, we're going to close with a, a prayer called, uh, As we part and go our way, may you forever be with us, O Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. And then I will give you my, what it, the Catholics call, apostolic blessing. Now listen carefully to the words. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds humble and pure in love of the most blessed Trinity. May the blessing of God Almighty be upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. God bless you.